The category winner um, for hotels is Nerian Hu, the water house at South Bund in China. Congratulations on winning. So you've brought some before images which are all of this project. So that makes perfect sense. You can just talk us through the inspiration behind the project. But also tell us a little bit about yourself and your company and, and how long have you been working in, in architecture and design? We're both Rosanna Hu, uh, Linda Neary. Um, we're both architects, trained as architects, um, both Chinese, um, raised in different parts of the world, um, educated in the States, and went back to China um, and started our practice. Um, originally from, uh, I worked for Michael Graves for many years, uh, and then started our practice in um, Shanghai about eight years ago. Um, Waterhouse. It's an interesting project for us because when we were given this project, it was a very good opportunity for us to understand what it is to really historically preserve a building, not in the context of how the Chinese understands it today. In a city like Shanghai, where in buildings like lane houses have been demolished almost on a weekly basis, um, we realize that this thread of history would be disrupted, um, if not completely disconnected, if we don't bring back the essence of the lane houses, which is very much um, the essence of Shanghai, the everyday, the ordinary, the mundane of Shanghai today. Um, and by creating this notion of bringing the public space, um, giving it back to the public, and not just uh, private, so it's not your typical hotel corridor, but actually bringing certain component of the old that you can experience. Um, bringing the notion of the lane houses, where you actually see voyeuristically other rooms, uh, restaurants, see other rooms. You can look at other people's uh, sitting area, sitting area looking at the reception area, the bar area looking up the, the toilet. This whole notion which is very much prevalent um, in lane houses in Shanghai today. Are you the only architects that have this feeling about preservation or is there a, a beginning to be a movement of Chinese architectural communities saying, look, okay, progress is good, development is good, but we don't want to lose all of the stuff from the past. There is definitely a lot of very good architects that's, that's going towards this direction. Unfortunately, there is a lot of pressure from developers that want to make the most money out of this short period of progressive time in history and they do not know how long this is gonna take so obviously it is inevitably for them uh, the best way is to try to make as much with little time this is um, I imagine the lobby of the hotel how has it gone down is, is it popular with the Chinese people or is it mostly sort of Europeans and Westerners who check in no it's, I think a lot of uh, Ch Chinese like it um, my mother um, upon walking into this lobby said, is this finished? I said, it is. And she said, you were crazy when you were eight years old. Now I'm, I'm convinced you are absolutely insane. Um, but we've lost clients, obviously. Two clients that have already signed with us. Um, big hotels that we thought would have given us a breakthrough in our practice. Come, came here and saw it and panicked and said, hmm. I don't think these are the right architects. Uh, so we lost deals, uh, but we've definitely gotten historical um, buildings um, on the other end. But this isn't a style for you, is it? This isn't your house style. You don't do kind of rough lux or whatever you want to call it. No, this is not style. It's about a statement in preservation. Um, that's the reason why when I presented, it's not to me a stylistic concept that I'm presenting, you see that all over the West. In fact, there are a lot of precedents that's, that's done it even better than we have. But what we're trying to do is, is an attitude, a statement, an attitude, uh, not just to developers, but to government officials, that it can be done, buildings like this, historically sensitively done, and um, be successful. And in the West, everyone's concerned about China. It's becoming very big, very powerful. And I think a lot of architects and designers are concerned that, well, once the Chinese learn how to do that, we're going to be in trouble. But is it already happening? I think um, the world is a community. And I believe when Ramkul has built CCTV Tower in Beijing, 
and when Herzog de Maron built the bird's nest, a lot of older Chinese architects asked me, Linton, why are you supporting them? I said, I'm not supporting them. I'm supporting the best design to come into China today. If you look at New York in the 40s, when Mies van der Rohe built Seagram Building, um, he was a German, German Jew, that built in New York. Today, if you go look at New York City, you don't see, you don't look at Seagram Building and say that's Mies van der Rohe. It is a New York typology. So I'm more interested in what Beijing and what Shanghai, what China can give back to the world. So it's not about nationality, not about color, but about the integrity of design. And that, to me, is more important. And people need to realize that. Uh, when we won a big commission, in fact, just about three months ago in London, when we won a big competition in Mayfair for a hotel in the museum, everyone panicked. And they say, the invasion of the Chinese architect. You know, uh, without realizing that uh, it was not just the English that lost to us, but also um, Germans, uh, uh, Italians, and, and uh, Japanese. But it's not so much about nationality. It's about presenting schemes. Uh, and I'm not saying our scheme is the best. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is there's that interchange. And there is, there's, there, as long as we keep an open mind, there will always be good architects going to the east, and hopefully good architects that will come to the West. Brilliant. Well, I think that's a perfect point to end on. And um, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.